both sides of this rivalry seem to disagree on almost everything. What's the official series record? Is it called Florida Georgia or Georgia Florida? And the two ballers repping number one for the Gators this season are Kadarius Tony and CJ Henderson. I'm not sure what it is, but whenever Florida and LSU play recently, there has to be some issue with the weather. I don't understand it. The Gators soccer team had a two hour weather delay in Baton Rouge. The end of last season left a bitter taste in the mouth of the Miami Hurricanes who enter this season with the highest preseason ranking they've had in over a decade. But to this team, it means absolutely nothing. 86 to 18. That was the score last time PK Young and Oak Hall boys basketball teams met on the hardwood back in December with the blue wave coming out with the win. When they faced off again last night, it was a similar result. The Florida Gators and Virginia Cavaliers are ready to rock here in Hard Rock Stadium in Miami for an orange and blue battle in the 2019 Capital One Orange Bowl. Two words describe Trey Brown's time at Mosley High School. Life altering. As the team's long snapper, Brown protects the team's field goal and extra point attempts. During Hurricane Michael, he had to protect his family and his home. I had to hold the front door closed because of um, the hurricane that kept pushing barge in the door, so water was getting through the door and stuff. Like many homes in the area, the Browns' home is uninhabitable, forcing the family to move 35 minutes away from the school. Line it up, line it up, line it up. Trey's father, Jeremy, who's also the team's head coach, says the long commutes for his teen adds angst, but it's part of their new normal. Every morning, man, it's a little bit, it's just a little bit nerve wracking until you get to school and you see your son and daughter, and like, hey, everything's good, you know, we made it and everything. It's a common challenge for students throughout Bay County. According to Superintendent Bill Husfeld, 5,500 of the district students were homeless following the storm. Now, the number is at 3,000. Superintendent Husfeld says the impact of Hurricane Michael has also greatly affected students' mental health. 40 students have been Baker Acted less than a quarter of the way through the school year. That's already double their yearly average. This storm, Michael did not care if you were white, black, rich, or poor. It just took away everything from everybody in its path. The challenges that people are facing mentally has no barriers. Athletic Director Josh Vandergriff says sports provides students with an outlet and restores a sense of normalcy. You see broken trees, blue tarps on roofs, spaces where there used to be homes. Kids live through that day in, day out. Them getting a break from that and coming out here and being able to release all of that energy and not being frustrated, and a lot of times that happens is a good thing. Sports helps kids release those inner demons is what we like to call them as coaches. Yeah! Like most of his teammates, Mosley Jr. offensive lineman Adrian Strickland was excited to get back on the field following the storm. It's hard to see your friends at the hurricane. Those trees blocked, blocking roads, it's hard to get around. Once football came, everybody was there and everybody was like so excited to see each other, especially that first day coming back. It brought everyone's spirits up and it just made everyone better. Trey Brown says one year later, the storm may have damaged a lot, but it didn't tear this team apart. It brought them closer together. We uh, set aside Hurricane Michael and just focus on the plays, focus on each other, focus on the team, being a team for each other. Not regretting what happened back then, but moving on and doing what happened now. Would look like to be Matt Krause missing line in sprints. Mac missed the line. You guys got to hold him accountable. He's not a manager anymore. Heck, he's on scholarship now. You got to hold him accountable. He's on scholarship now. Actually served as the finish line to his journey. Even when he said it, it never registered with me because he was just yelling at me because I didn't touch the line. I take pride in stuff like touching the line, so I didn't hear anything else after that, but initially it was just shock. Matt Krause's journey to scholarship started in the stands, rooting on the Gators as they won two national championships on the hardwood. Then, when he arrived on campus, he got a little bit closer to the floor, joining the team as a manager. But then at the start of last season, he walked onto the team he grew up watching and got to step on the floor with the Florida Gators. Given his loyalty to the program, putting Kraus on scholarship was an easy decision for head coach Mike White. And not too long ago, he was he was doing our guys laundry. And now he's not only playing with him, he's he's, he's a scholarship guy. You know, why not reward a guy who's uh, got a lot of sweat equity, you know, in the program. He's been a really hardworking guy. He's a winner. Even though some time has passed since receiving the scholarship, Kraus is still trying to comprehend it all. Looking five years ago, sitting up there watching practice, trying to be a manager, that 
I would be one of the guys and not even a walk-on, which I was just so thankful to be, but now on scholarship, it's, I don't think I'll quite ever wrap my head around it. Krause hopes his story can serve as an inspiration for others. Kind of give hope to people like me growing up, you know, who might not be the most talented, but if you work hard and you have a dream, you know, you just never know. As cliche as it sounds, but like I'm kind of living that cliche, you know, you never know what can happen. After two seasons as a Florida Gator, Funa Nakasoglu was ready to start the next chapter in her basketball career. She joined Turkish team Galatasaray for her first season of professional basketball. The European League and the Turkish League are both very high com like competitions, so I was excited to just um, soak up what I could and get some experience in that aspect. Nakasoglu's team was rolling, holding a 15-3 record on the year. Coronavirus concerns initially forced the team to play a game without fans. It literally felt like a training session. I remember warming up and I felt so weird. Um, obviously, you know, the bench people were there and the referees and whatnot, but it just did not feel the same at all. She didn't know it at the time, but that would be the final game of the season. We had like two or three days and there was like a lot of talk up in there and then they, you know, told us that the league was getting postponed and then eventually cancelled because it had gone you know, from zero to 100 real quick. Turkey became a coronavirus hotspot. The bridge between Europe and Asia had more than 118,000 cases with over 3,000 deaths by the end of April. With the season over, Nakasoglu and her teammates processed through what could have been. A lot of us were hoping that, you know, maybe it would pass and would be able to play um, later on in the year. Um, in the finals especially, but you know, it obviously sucked, but um, everyone knew that it was for the best. I mean, everyone's health is more important than anything. Nakasoglu is now home in Australia, arriving before the country closed its borders. I had two days to pack up my stuff, leave my apartment, you know, say my goodbyes um, and get back home. So it was very, it was very chaotic. Abrupt goodbyes are not forever. Basketball will eventually return, and Nakasoglu is ready. You miss it straight away, even if you've been doing it for so long. Um, it's just like a part of you now, so I'm just etching to get back. Back on the court, where she belongs. Zach Oliveri, WUFT News. Last time the Gator baseball team faced off against LSU, they were celebrating their first national championship in school history. Tonight, these two bitter rivals meet once again to start a crucial SEC series. Welcome back to sports. I'm Zach Oliveri. Florida heads to Baton Rouge trying to accomplish something they haven't been able to do all year, win an SEC road game. The Gators have lost six straight on the road in SEC play this year. Florida's inexperience has played a part in these struggles. The Gators' ability to stay calm in what should be an intimidating atmosphere this weekend will be key to end this skid. Tommy Mays will get the start for Florida tonight, and tomorrow we'll see the return of Jack Leftwich. He's been out since March 31st with a blister on his throwing hand. It wouldn't be a Florida LSU matchup without issues with the weather. The game is still on despite LSU shutting down campus due to severe weather in the forecast. Tonight's first pitch has been pushed back to 9 p.m. They say revenge is best served cold. For Florida softball, however, revenge is best served scorching hot. Pitcher Kelly Barnhill was throwing heat last night against the Seminoles to lead the Gators to victory. Barnhill dominated the Seminoles on the mound. In the first, you get a strikeout. In the second, you get a strikeout. In third, you guessed it, you get a strikeout. Barnhill finished with nine strikeouts in a complete game shutout performance. With the Seminole bats silenced, the Gator bats roared. In the four, Jordan Matthews rocks this one, doubling to center, driving in Amanda Bean to give the Gators an early 1-0 lead in the fourth inning. Same inning with the bases loaded, Hannah Adams delivers a shot to the left field wall. This adds two runs to the scoreboard and Florida takes a 3-0 lead. Florida would add one more run as they capture the 4-0 win, returning the favor after FSU blanked the Gators in Gainesville just two weeks ago. Next up for the Gators, a home series with Alabama this weekend. The SEC men's tennis tournament is well underway in Gainesville. Florida finished the regular season undefeated in conference play for the first time since 2003. Their perfect record gave the Gators the top seed and home court advantage for this week. 
In round two matches earlier today, LSU faced off against South Carolina at the Alfred Ring Tennis Complex. The Tigers fell to the Gamecocks 4-2. Other matches today included Vanderbilt facing Kentucky and Alabama taking on Ole Miss. The winner of the Ole Miss-Alabama matchup faces the Gators tomorrow in the quarterfinals. Heading into postseason play, Florida head coach Brian Shelton applies the team's mindset to Isaac Newton's law of motion. You know, an object in motion tends to stay in motion. So for us, it's just keep this thing moving, keep thriving each day, trying to get better. Don't get ahead of yourself. Don't look to Friday when we're playing our next match. Let's look at today and let's keep this thing moving in the right direction. The action for today isn't over just yet. The final match features Arkansas and Georgia, which starts at 6 o'clock. Florida takes the court tomorrow at 3 p.m. The Tampa Bay Rays have shined during the first three weeks of the season, and it looks like they aren't slowing down anytime soon. Their dominance was on full display against the Baltimore Orioles. Rays up 4-0 in the third. G-Man Choi says, see you later, baseball. With a moonshot solo home run to right center. This gives the Rays a commanding 5-0 lead in the third inning and even gives a souvenir for a lucky fan. He's pretty excited. The very next batter, Yandy Diaz says,